Okay, so this um, uh, last quick thing, you know, uh, that I want to talk about is, you know, various different induction motor potential, you know, torque speed curves that you might have, okay? So, uh, we, we discussed the general behavior and why the curve looks like, uh, looks though like the way it is. And I said that note these points, these are pretty important points, okay? Uh, so, let's go ahead and uh, look at this graph over here, okay? I have four different motors that have, you know, different torque speed curves, all right? Or potentially, by the way, this could be one motor that you vary the certain quantity in. But anyways, for now, let's assume these are four different motors. Okay, so they have these kind of speed curves. Okay, um, let's uh, torque speed curves. Now let's let's observe a few things. Okay, so I'm uh, in, I'm using you know the same kind of letters for each one, N F L and F L and so on, and T S T S T S and tau S and so on. But like green with green and so on, that that should hopefully. Um, be clear so okay let's observe a few things i've marked x's where i think i'm just approximating here where i think that full load operating condition is going to be okay where that motor is going to most likely operate okay so let's observe this okay observe that look over here for the red curve okay its operating condition is at a really high speed okay so it's the greatest speed over here and it's followed right after by this black point followed by the blue and followed by the green. The green is the slowest in its operating condition of all of them. Okay, so what does that mean? All right. Now let's. Uh, that that means that because they are that that these these are kind of distances from uh, and sync the synchronous speed. We can also say that the sync the uh, sorry the slips <laughs> slip ratio of the red guy is less than the slip ratio of of the black guy and the less than the slip ratio of the blue guy and so on. All right, and green. So the green has the largest slip ratio of all of them. Lowest speed and the green has the largest slip ratio. The red has the largest speed and the smallest slip ratio. Okay, now this implies what? This last one over here, these kind of like ends with long noses. These are efficiencies, okay? So what did, I, what did I say here? I noted that because of these conditions, the efficiency of the red guy is actually the greatest of all of them. And this guy, green guy over here, he has the lowest efficiency. Okay, why do I say this? What? Where does this come from? Okay, we understand where this and we understand why this is implied from that. But why is this applied from that? Well, if you look at uh, some of the equations I noted from uh, you know the uh, lab lab manual, you'll see this equation over here. This p converted is equal to one minus s p air gap. Okay. Um, what is that? What does that kind of say? That tells you that the amount of the air gap power present that is converted into mechanical power, okay, that is equal to one minus the, the uh, slip ratio, okay. So you can imagine if you have a high slip ratio, if you're operating at a high slip ratio, okay, let's say 0 0.9, then one minus 0 0.9, 0 0.1, you're getting only 10% of that air gap uh, power is being converted into actual mechanical power, okay. Whereas if you had a small slip ratio, then say you say it was like 0 0.05, then that's 0 0.95 in there. So 95% of your air gap power is being converted into mechanical power. Okay, and let's just quickly review what these powers are again. So if we go to like to our you know power flow diagram that I have over here, hopefully you can see that fine. Okay, you put you're putting in. Just imagine, just put your mind right now in like the the current flowing into the into the motor. Okay. You start off with some P in, this is the electrical power in, okay, that's three times V phase, I phase, cosine of theta, that's the power factor and so on. Okay, as you go in, before you reach the motor at all, there's a bunch of different stages that your current has to go through. First of all, some of that um, uh, power going in is going to get lost as, as copper losses in the stator, okay, and then some of that is also going to get lost as core losses uh, because there's the, there's the ferromagnetic core there on the rotor. And some of that, that, that eddy current and hysteresis losses, those are also going to take away power from your initial input, okay? And so once you've taken away those powers, okay, that, that power now available between the stator and the, and the rotor, that's called the air gap power over there, okay? That is the result of subtracting these two. So there you go. You have your air gap power over here. That's what's ready to be transferred wirelessly over the air gap, okay? We're no longer electric, electrically connected here. This is pure wireless power transfer, okay? So that's what's gonna be transferred wirelessly. All right, that's great, okay? So we, we get to the rotor, okay? If that was a immediate path to the mechanical power, then that's great. Then all of this air gap power is gonna go to mechanical power. However, what happens is, of course, the rotor itself has some, you know, resistance. So there's gonna be some 
copper losses in the rotor. So that's going to take away from the air gap power. And then we get to that P converted. That's P converted stands for how much electrical power is being converted to overall mechanical power. All right. So that's what that quantity is over there. And then we can see that mechanical power, some of that is taken away from friction and uh, windage losses. And then there's some stray losses that we don't are not able to account for. And that finally leads to the actual power output of the motor, mechanically speaking. All right. So that's just between here and here is what I'm saying. That one minus S term comes up. How much of this appears here depends on your slip ratio. And that is what is expressed over here. And that's why I point an arrow down and have this N with the long nose over here although that kind of looks like a face which is which is weird i don't know if you can see that but anyways so this quantity over here shows a direct relationship between efficiency okay because if you have low efficiency then very little of the power coming from here goes to there if you have high efficiency most of the power going here goes to there okay this implies a direct relationship between your slip ratio and how efficient your motor is that's super super duper important okay and so we know all these motors over here in their operating condition, they're working at a certain amount of slip ratio that in turn has a direct statement on what the efficiency of the motor is going to be, at least relatively speaking. We don't know the exact values, but we know relatively speaking where they're going to be. And so that's why I'm saying because this red one is, it has a very small slip ratio. This one minus S is going to be, you know, very close to one. So almost all of the air gap, air gap power goes into the converted mechanical power. Whereas this one over here, this green guy that's way off, he has a very large slip ratio. And if he has a very large slip ratio, this is going to be, you know, closer and closer to zero. So a lot less of this air gap power that's being transferred wirelessly actually gets to the mechanical power output of the motor. All right. So your, your operating condition has a direct statement on what the efficiency of the motor is going to be. Okay. So that's really important. The other thing, however, I'd like to, so you might think and conclude from this, well, being at this very low speed, low um, um, uh, efficiency and high uh, uh, slip ratio, that's pretty bad. This green guy is looking pretty bad. There's nothing going for him. Well, look at this. On the other hand, however, these are the starting torques. And remember there, I mentioned this, to pay attention to that starting torque point. Look at these starting torques over here. The green guy will actually have the highest starting torque. Okay, and the red guy that had the best efficiency and most, uh, you know, plus points going to his name, he has the lowest starting torque. Okay, and so that actually comes to a whole a trade-off in in um, uh, induction motor design. Okay, you can have a motor operating at a very low slip ratio and therefore be very in, be very efficient, but most probably it's going to have a very low starting torque. Uh, however, if you want a motor with a high starting torque, that's great. You can get one. But in its operating condition, it's going to be very inefficient, okay, because of that high slip ratio. And it's going to also be very slow uh, as well. So that's kind of something just, you know, uh, a very important observation and a really, really nice intuition kind of absorbing thing, all right? And then the last thing I want to note here is look at all of them. They all have the same peak. That's why I kind of drew this dotted line on top. What did we say was the peak of the torque speed curve? That was the pullout torque. Okay, so if you had held the pullout torque constant for across the various different curves, okay, uh, you know, various different motors, if, it if they had the same pullout torque, then the only thing differing between them are these things, okay, that actually corresponds to motors that have very similar circuits, except for one value, and that's what I circle over here, this R2 value, okay, and so, um, although it's a little bit of complicated math to show you, but this R2 value actually has a huge part and a huge role in where this peak appears along this curve. Notice that if I kind of pulled this red guy a little bit this way, he would 